All right, guys, so this uh, lesson is to go over 3-2 in your uh, visible learning documents. So we're talking about light. So I'm not going to be talking about the flame test lab that we're going to be doing um, in this lesson. This is just going over light, the different light equations you need to know, um, what everything means in those equations, how to plug in numbers and solve for different things, and just uh, a, a very just scratching the surface of what light is, okay, so, uh, and the nature of light, okay, so we're not getting super detailed, and essentially what it comes down to, what you need to be able to do in this class is, you're gonna, I'm gonna show you two equations, possibly three, um, which they all kind of mean the same thing, so, uh, you know, two different equations, you need to know what the symbols are in those equations, um, what they represent, um, and you need to be able to take like a word problem, uh, plug in numbers into the equations and solve for the other thing. All right, so if I give you the speed of light and the wavelength, you need to be able to solve for the frequency. If I give you the energy of light and um, you need to be, you might be able, to, you might have to solve for the wavelength or maybe the frequency. So it's just kind of, you know, being able to plug in numbers and solve. But what is going to be tricky when you're doing those types of problems is, scientific notation is going to come back we're going to be dealing with really small numbers and large numbers um, so you're going to have to be entering uh, these calculations in your calculator using scientific notation properly uh, and also paying attention to units so we're going to introduce this new unit called uh, hertz um, which is our unit for frequency and i'm going to show you how to um, deal with it um, and uh, you know, you want to make sure your units match. So like if your speed is meters per second, but your length is nanometers, uh, then you need to convert, you know, nanometers to meters to match the speed, or you need to convert the meters per second to nanometers per second to match the length. So you, you, the, where students get tricked up is they understand, you know, how to solve for these simple equations, use these equations to solve for something. Um, but they don't use the proper number because they don't have the proper unit or something like that. So those are the things to watch out for. All right. So let's jump into it. Um, so first we're going to be talking about way, uh, light as a wave. Okay. So one thing we want to know about light is its speed is pretty much constant. Now that changes depending on what medium the light wave is traveling through and but we're, we're gonna pretty much say it's constant. Now, like in AP chemistry, we say that's our speed of light. And this constant's given to you on a formula sheet. Uh, in honors chemistry, we're gonna call this our speed of light. So we're just gonna round it to 3.00 times 10 to the eight meters per second. And again, you will get this uh, on a formula sheet. You don't have to memorize it, okay? You just gotta know what it means, right? So what, what does this mean? It means light's really fast, right? Light is the fastest thing. It's the, you know, basically the speed limit of the universe. Um, but light is this fast. What does that mean? It means in one second, it can travel 300 million meters. And if you want to put that in a little perspective, if you don't understand, you know, how long a meter is, um, you should, but if you don't, uh, in one second, light, light can travel this many miles, 186,000 miles, all right? Just in one second, 186,000 miles. Okay, so that's how fast light is. But to understand, but what we need to understand right now is it's a constant. So we always know that number. We always know the speed of light, all right? So now let's get into the properties of this light wave, okay? So the properties of a wave, the main ones we want to focus on are the wavelength and what we call the frequency. We already know the speed, right? The speed of a light wave is the speed of light. So we already know what speed is. Speed is. Now let's look at the symbols. When you see this in an equation, this is the symbol lambda, that's wavelength. I'm gonna review that in a second. This is called the symbol nu. It kind of looks like a V maybe, like a U slash V type thing. It's called nu, but what it is, what it represents is the frequency of light. And then C in equations is the speed of light. So like that C and E equals MC squared, that C is the speed of light, okay? Now we're not gonna use that equation, we're gonna use another equation. Uh, that has this symbol C in it. And what you want to know is that symbol represents the speed of light. So you always know what C is. It's this number. Plug it in. Okay. All right. 
So let's talk about what this wavelength is called. So we got to think of a wave. So here's our light wave, right? And I don't know any trick people out there. Sign rise, sign set, sign rise, sign set. Anyway. Um, so what is a wavelength? A wavelength is the distance, you can think of it as the distance from crest to crest or from trough to trough. So it's a distance, right? It's a length and we measure it in meters or a lot of times I like to measure it in nanometers. I'll show you why in a second, but it's just a distance, okay? So from that, that peak to that peak, whatever that distance is, that's your wavelength, okay? So wavelength gets the symbol lambda, which is this. So when you see that in an equation, that is your wavelength, okay? It is the distance from crest to crest or trough to trough of a light wave, from one peak to another peak, okay? The SI unit for length or distance is meters, so that's why a lot of times, that's why that speed of light was given to you in meters per second. Um, but like I said, I like to think of light in nanometers, um, and it's because wavelengths of the visible spectrum are very short and measuring them in nanometers makes us not have to put the number in scientific notation. So I'll show you that in a second. All right. All right. But that's what wavelength is. So let's talk about frequency. Frequency is a little bit more difficult of a concept, I guess, to understand. Like wavelength makes sense. It's just a length. But what is frequency? Okay. Well, first it gets this symbol. All right. But the way to really think about it, it's cycles of the wave per second, cycles per second. So if you were looking at a fixed point and, and the light wave was passing by a fixed point, so let's say this wave was just passing by and this was the point you were looking at, the number of, of waves that go by in a given second is called the frequency of light. It's how frequent the wave passes by, okay? And it's in one, in, in one second. So frequency is cycles per second, okay? How many cycles the wave pass by in a given second? All right, now the units for frequency, they're called hertz, okay? And they get the symbol HZ. But, so, but as soon as you see hertz, you might wanna just replace it with one over seconds. Because if you're thinking about like my units and I'm plugging this in the equation and my units are canceling out. So now we're thinking more dimensional analysis type deal. Um, one over seconds is a better way to think of it because you're going to see how seconds cancel out and you're left with wavelength and stuff like that. So anytime you see HZ, which is Hertz in your mind, remind yourself that that means cycles per second. And really how we represent that in units is just one over seconds. All right. That's how we represent it. Okay. All right. So here's kind of the visible spectrum and notice, right? Let's, let's look at red, red from peak to peak has a longer wavelength than orange from peak to peak. So here are the, you know, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, it's a rainbow, um, right? From shortest wavelength to longest wavelength. Okay. So red has the longest wavelength of the visible spectrum and violet has the shortest wavelength. And notice how they're measured in nanometers. And that's why it's kind of like good to um, think of wavelength in nanometers and not meters, because a lot of times we're going to be referring back to the visible spectrum, especially when we do our uh, flame test. Okay. All right. So um, let's think about frequency, right? Let's think about how frequency and wavelength play hand in hand. So what you have to imagine is these waves are going by at the same speed, right? So let's, let's say these waves are traveling, you know, let's pick a fixed point. We can fix like, you know, we'll, we'll, whatever, we'll call this the point where, where our focal point right down this line here. And these waves are passing by at the speed of light. Well, which one is gonna have more frequent waves? Well, if they're passing at the same speed, the one that has waves that are closer together, the one with the shortest wavelength is going to have more cycles of the wave pass by in a given second. So because light is, has a constant speed, the shorter the wavelength, the greater the frequency, the more frequent the wave. And the longer the wavelength, the less frequent the wave, the lower the frequency. Okay, so wavelength and frequency have an inverse 
relationship. As wavelength increases, frequency decreases. As um, wavelength decreases, the wave becomes more frequent, so frequency increases, All right? All right, so again, if you imagine the wave is passing by at a constant speed, well, if this is my wavelength, I'm not gonna get as many cycles of the wave in a given second versus if down here, that was my wavelength, okay? So the speed of light is a constant. Uh, speed is distance over time, meters per second, all right? The symbol for the speed of light is C, all right? So if light, if light is a wave that has a constant speed, the shorter the wavelength, the greater the frequency, the more cycles of uh, the wave will pass by in a given second, okay? So what we need to know is the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency, or the longer the wavelength, the lower the frequency, okay? Now the speed of light equation is C equals lambda nu. Now what does that really mean? Well, remember C is our, our symbol for speed of light, lambda is our symbol for wavelength, and nu is our symbol for frequency. So what we're saying in this equation is speed of light equals wavelength times frequency. Now let's think of how that plays out, right? Wavelength is a measurement of meters or distance. Frequency is hertz, but remember it's one over seconds. So what do you get when you take meters and you multiply it by one over seconds? You get meters per second, which is the speed of light. Okay. All right. Um, so again, the, the relationship between uh, wavelength and frequency is inverse. Okay. So now what we want to do is talk about the spectrum of light. All right. So, and we're not just talking about the visible spectrum. All right. Let's look at this. Right. So remember, we've talked about gamma rays before when we talked about gamma radiation. So gamma rays have the highest energy. But what does that really mean? It means it has the greatest frequency or the shortest wavelengths. Look at this. We're talking about 10 to the negative 11th of a meter. Okay. Very, very short wavelengths. Okay. So you might have heard of gamma rays, X rays, maybe ultraviolet rays. Maybe you not. Maybe you haven't heard of infrared or microwaves, or you've heard of microwaves, maybe, and also radio waves, but maybe not infrared. But this is the spectrum of light from highest energy to lowest energy. But what does that really mean? Shortest wavelength or more the most frequent light. This is the frequency down here, 10 to the 20th cycles per second versus 10 to the 4th cycles per second over here. So the most frequent waves, which have the highest energy, all the way to the lowest frequency waves, which have the lowest energy, okay? Or another way to look at it, the lowest, or sorry, the, the, the shortest wavelength all the way to the longest wavelength, all right? Now, notice the visible spectrum is just a short sliver. It's just right there. That's all the light we can see with our naked eye, just right there. And the range is 400 to 700 nanometers. That's what we can see. So 400 nanometers is around the shortest light weight, uh, uh, wavelength we can see. And 700, around 700, is the longest wavelength of light that we can see. Okay? And it look, that's just a very small spectrum. So there's a, all this light out there that we just don't see with our naked eye, okay? And I like to memorize the visible spectrum in terms of nanometers, uh, just because, I've, I don't know, for me it's easier to memorize 400 to 700 nanometers versus four times 10 to the negative seven meters to seven times 10 to the negative seven meters. 400 nanometers is four times 10 to the negative seven meters. So this range right here is the same exact range here. It's just measured in meters versus nanometers. So you need to memorize the visible spectrum uh, in terms of wavelength ranges. Um, but uh, uh, I, I find it easier to use nanometers, all right? Now, another thing to understand is, right, 
uh, you probably in um, elementary school, you probably did Roy G. Biv to remember the colors of the rainbow. Like, so red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, which really isn't a thing, and then violet, okay? But uh, now we might want to flip that and think of Vib G. Yor, violet, indigo, blue, green, uh, yellow, orange, red, because that is the visible spectrum from shortest wavelength to longest wavelength, right? Vib G. Yor, going from shortest wavelength to longest wavelength, Roy G. Biv, going from longest wavelength to shortest wavelength of visible light, right? Okay. All right. So if we think about the relationship between wavelength and frequency, violet has the greatest frequency. So violet has the shortest wavelength of the visible spectrum. So that means it has the highest frequency. Red has the uh, longest wavelength of the visible spectrum, which means it has the uh, lowest frequency. Okay. So let's do a practice problem. All right. What is the frequency of violet light, which has a wavelength of 413 nanometers? All right. Well, I'm just going to plug in my equation. Remember, I always know C, and so I'm solving for frequency. So I'm solving for this, and I'm given the wavelength. So I'm going to plug in the speed of light. I'm going to plug in my wavelength, and I'm going to solve for my frequency. So all I have to do is the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So the speed of light divided by the wavelength here will give me my frequency. Okay. But this is where we got to watch out for units. Remember, I gave you the speed of light in meters per second. But in this practice problem, I gave you a wavelength in nanometers. So just doing uh, this C divided by this wavelength won't give me the right answer because the units don't match. I need this to be meters or I need this to be nanometers. Okay. So what I like to do is memorize the speed of light in nanometers per second. So recall, you know, let's go back to the metric system, unit one, a nanometer, there's 10 to the nine nanometers in one meter. So if you just add nine to that exponent here, then you get the speed of light in nanometers per second. So this is the speed of light I'm going to use in this equation if I'm going to plug in 413 nanometers. The other way to go about it is change this to 4.13 times 10 to the negative 7 meters and plug that number in for the wavelength, and then you could use this speed of light, okay? But I don't know. For me, I like to keep it in nanometers because I like to, you know, always kind of remember I'm talking about the visible spectrum, and I know the range of the visible spectrum in nanometers, so that's what I'm thinking, okay? So all we have to do is speed of light divided by the, um, the wavelength. And notice nanometers cancel out, and you're left with one over seconds. And remember, one over seconds is the same thing as a hertz, and that's what the units for frequency is. So we just figured out that uh, a light wave with this wavelength will have this frequency. And notice the frequency is pretty high, right? Light is really fast. So, so there's a lot of cycles of the wave in just one second, right? Just one second, 10 to the 14th. Right? That's a lot of cycles of a wave in one second. Right? All right, let's do another practice problem. Would we be able to see light with a frequency of that many hertz? Okay. Now, remember, that's one over seconds. Okay. So, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my speed of light equation. Right? But now I'm going to solve for wavelength. And the reason I'm going to solve for wavelength is because the question is asking me, can I see this light? Well... I need to convert this uh, frequency to a wavelength so I can see if it falls within this range. So if my wavelength is between 400 and 700 nanometers, then yes, I can see it. If it's outside of this range, if it's less than 400 nanometers or it's greater than 700 nanometers, then no, I can't see it. All right. So now all I have to do is take my speed of light and divide it by the frequency. Okay. And that'll give me the wavelength. But remember, if you use the speed of light that I first gave you times 10 to the eight meters per second, when you solve for wavelength, it's gonna be meters. But if you're thinking about the visible spectrum in terms of nanometers, then you might wanna use the other speed of light so when, that when you solve for wavelength, you end up with nanometers, all right? So again, I like to memorize the visible spectrum in nanometers. So here I'm gonna do my speed of light in nanometers per second. 
I'm going to divide it by the frequency, which is one over seconds. And in this case, one over seconds um, divided by one over seconds, seconds cancel out and you're left with nanometers. So here's my wavelength that has this frequency and that falls outside of this range. So no, I can't see that light. And that light is going to be shorter, or sorry, longer than red. So if we went back to this you know, diagram here, this spectrum of light, right? We're talking about light that's over in this range here, right? Maybe infrared light, microwave light, but definitely longer wavelength than red light or lower in energy, lower, than, lower in frequency than red light. Okay, so no, I wouldn't be able to see it, okay? All right, so now just quickly, we're going to talk about calculating the energy of light. And this is when we're gonna start thinking of light as a particle. So the word we need to learn is photon. A particle of light is called a photon, okay? And there's a, a quick equation to calculate the energy of a photon. And it's the energy of a photon equals h, h nu. And so remember that nu is the same nu from the other equation, so that's the frequency. So what we're saying here is energy equals h times frequency. So now we have to figure out what h is, okay? h is a constant, it's called Planck's constant. So this equation is saying the energy of a photon equals Planck's constant times frequency. So you'll be given Planck's constant, you don't have to memorize it, but understand h is a number that you can just look up and plug into your equation, okay? This is Planck's constant, okay? 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34, it's an incredibly small number. And that's joules times seconds. So think about unit cancel, uh, you know, how units will play. Planck's constant is joules times seconds. Frequency is one over seconds. So when I multiply them, seconds will cancel out and I'll be left with joules, which is, remember, our SI unit for energy. Okay. So and the other thing to understand about this equation, since this number stays the same, as um, frequency goes up, energy will go up. As frequency goes down, energy will go down. So as frequency of light increases, energy of light increases. So the more frequent the light, the more energy it has, okay? The less frequent the light, the less energy it has, okay? So frequency and energy are directly related. But remember, wavelength and frequency are inverse of each other. So that means wavelength and energy have an inverse relationship. So the longer the wavelength, the, the, the less the frequent, uh, the uh, less frequent the waves are, the lower in energy. So the longer the wavelength, the lower the energy, the shorter the wavelength, the higher the energy. So of our visible spectrum, violet has the most energy because it has the shortest wavelength or the highest frequency. And red has the lowest energy because it has the longest wavelength or the lower frequency. The lower the frequency, the lower the energy, okay? The more frequent you get hit by a wave, the more energy you feel. That's the way to think about it. So the more frequent the wave, the more energy it has, all right? So let's use that equation and solve for this problem, all right? So what is the energy of a photon of red light with a frequency of 4.32 times 10 to the 14 hertz? Okay, so remember that's just one over seconds. So all we have to do is plug this number in for nu and then multiply it by h, which is a constant, and that'll give us our energy. So I plug in Planck's constant, I plug in my frequency, seconds will end up canceling out, and I'm left with joules. So one photon with this frequency has that energy. Now notice that's a really small energy value, but we're talking about the, 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 the energy of a single photon. So I guess a way to think about that is that would be the energy of a single cycle of a wave. But you're probably going to be hit by, you know, many cycles of that wave right? 10 to the 14 per second, basically, right? Right? So you'll, you'll be, you know, hit with this much energy times 10 to the 14 uh, every second, if that's the light you're being exposed to, that would be the way to think about it. So this is, a, when you calculate energy of a light using this equation, it's always going to be a small number because we're talking about the energy of a single photon, just one little photon, right? Okay. So a photon is measured. Uh, so let's do another practice. A photon is measured to have the energy of 5 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. Can we see the light? So this is where we're going to have to combo up our equations, right? So I can use this equation. I, I'm given the energy, so I could use this equation to solve for the frequency. 
And then once I have the frequency, right, once I solve for the frequency, I can plug it into this equation and solve for the wavelength, okay? So first, I'm going to use my E equals H nu equation to solve for the uh, frequency. So I'm going to, so that means frequency equals energy divided by Planck's constant. So if I do the energy here, right, divided by Planck's constant, which is that, I'm going to get my frequency. So when I plug those in, I get my frequency of that light is 7.55 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Okay. But I don't, I don't memorize my visible spectrum in terms of, of uh, frequency ranges. You could, you could figure out the frequency of 400 nanometers and the, the frequency of 700 nanometers and me memorize the visible spectrum in terms of frequency ranges if you want to. Um, but, you know, now you're, you're going to be talking about like 10 to the 14 to something else, 10 to the 14. And I, it, for me, it's just easier, 400 to 700 nanometers. That's the one to remember. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, uh, the frequency here, and I'm going to plug it in to our speed of light equation, plug in my speed of light, and I'm going to solve for the wavelength. Now, I'm going to use my 3 times 10 to the 17 speed of light so I can get my nanometers. So when I solve... What we figure out is light with this energy has this wavelength. And if I'm going to say my rate wavelength is 400 to 700, this technically falls right outside of that range. It's a little bit less than 400. So I would say, no, I can't see it, but you, you might be able to. It's close enough to 400. Like this isn't really a hard range here. Okay. So, but, uh, you know, you could just say no because it's outside of the range. Okay. And if you want to combine these two equations, right, here they are. So energy of a photon equals Planck's constant times speed of light over wavelength, okay? You don't have to, right? You could do that last problem the way I did it, right? Solve for the frequency and then plug it in here and solve for the wavelength, okay? Or you could, you know, also know that equation as well, all right? All right, so I hope that um, you know helps you out with the light equation stuff. Um, we're gonna apply this a little bit more when we get to the flame test and all that stuff, but um, that's essentially what you need to be able to do. You need to know the relationship between frequency and wavelength. You need to know the relationship between frequency and energy or wavelength and energy. Um, you know, as frequency increases, energy increases, but as uh, wavelength increases, frequency decreases, so energy also decreases, so that kind of thing. Um, you're not going to have to memorize the equations. You'll be given those on quizzes and tests. You're not going to have to memorize Planck's constant or the speed of light. You'll be given those. Um, you just got to know how to use them, and you got to know how to make sure your units are agreeing with each other and all that stuff, all right? So I hope that helps. Catch you next time.